Okay, great. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Johannes Schöning from the University of Bremen. Um, this is a short uh, talk, so um, I, will, I will walk you through that um, very, very quickly. Uh, Watch through is joint work um, together with my colleagues uh, from Google and from Hasselt University. Um, basically, let's start what Watch through does. In a nutshell, basically, Watch through tries to expand the uh, um, output space of a smartwatch by attaching a secondary a screen to the smartwatch, which is uh, semi-transparent, which is able to mirror the main screen content to that secondary dis uh, display. And basically, by doing so, watch through enables three novel interaction techniques. First, um, um, this is the so-called pop-up visuals. Um, notifications or incoming calls uh, could be displayed on this secondary semi-transparent displays, which allow the users to just glance at that uh, content without lifting their arms or uh, uh, twisting their wrist and looking um, at this content. Second, watch through enables um, so-called uh, um, uh, second perspective. Here, um, by just flicking the wrist and changing between the main and the secondary screen, additional information about uh, some data could be revealed. And third, uh, watch through enables so-called, or what we call, peek through interaction. If the device is tracked with six degrees of freedom, um, uh, objects in the environment could, uh, could be augmented as, as you can see here, this little power socket. And before I explain those three interaction techniques in detail, let me uh, quickly uh, uh, walk you through the related work. And as we have seen in the other presentations, and um, as, as uh, um, earlier, um, there's a lot of work um, trying to uh, um, uh, um, address um, the, the, the constant problem of smart uh, watches, namely the limited input and output space. And this list here on the right-hand side is far from complete. And basically, we have ordered you know, the, the papers um, and, and placed them on the hands where we think you know, they try to extend the input and output space. It is interesting to note, while there's a lot of work extending input techniques, as we have also seen here earlier in the session, there is less work on extending the output space of smart watches. Therefore, just have a look at three related uh, uh, um, papers that are uh, clearly in line with our ideas from Watchthrough. The first one is research presented by Nokia at WIS 2012. Here, the smartwatch output space was extended by attaching multiple displays in a bracelet uh, uh, form factor around uh, the, the user's wrist, therefore allowing uh, uh, more content to be displayed at once. More recently, um, here, um, the smartwatch screen was extended using laser projections, which enabled uh, another input uh, uh, possibility besides the main screen. And at last year, Kai, uh, this work extended um, the output space of smartwatches by an, uh, attaching an additional secondary displays that could be displayed in a different configuration around the main screen. In contrast, in contrast to related work, uh, watch through, um, as you have seen here, all those three related works are often custom-made custom prototypes. And in contrast to related work, watch through is uh, uh, applicable to uh, most uh, standard smartwatches today and does not require any modification of the hardware. Um, and basically, we have built different uh, watch through prototypes. One prototype to support the uh, pop-up visuals and uh, second perspective interaction. And the third one, and the third one to support uh, the peek through interaction. And if you like, we are happy to share um, all our uh, construction uh, 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 instructions and uh, material. Now, let me quickly walk uh, you through all uh, the different uh, interactions. Here are pop-up visuals. As I said, you know, on the secondary display, um, information about incoming calls or, or messages could be displayed. And um, to summarize that quickly, 
users do not necessarily then have to lift up their hand and you know, uh, 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 twist the wrist, but can notice the visual output of the corner of their eyes. The second perspective is a bit different. Here in this example and in this uh, little clip, um, hopefully it's running now, yeah, uh, a second perspective is displayed. When the user is watching at the main screen, he sees the map, and when the user is you know, uh, uh, twisting his arm, he can see uh, uh, an arrow uh, um, pointing towards the direction he wants to go. Uh, again, I quickly summarize the second interaction techniques. Um, watch through uh, allows to that uh, uh, additional information is presented in an alternative way. Third, we have implemented uh, peek through. And peek through requires that the device is tracked with six degrees of freedom. And here, for example, you know, we show how in an augmented uh, 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 home uh, scenario, uh, um, by, by watching uh, through the secondary display, objects in the environment could be augmented with additional information. Of course, this requires that the device, as well as the user's uh, head position, is, uh, um, uh, is tracked. Therefore, we used an OptiTrack system to track the watch and um, to do the dynamic field of view calculations, we also tracked the user's uh, um, head. And by doing so, watch through allows you know, novel interactions. Here, for example, the student can explore uh, uh, um, the, the solar system by uh, interactively by walking through the, the room or here the student is assisted by you know uh, um, um, assembling here um, um, the, the hardware device and the nice thing is a watch through is an optical see-through augmented reality device that uh, is wearable has a compact form factor and does not need to be held in a user's hand. To quickly summarize, uh, the peek-through interaction enables uh, uh, optical see-through uh, augmented reality experience with a very compact and always accessible device form factor. Of course, we collected uh, preliminary user feedback on all uh, the different interaction techniques. And basically, there's more in the paper, but you know, I quickly summarize the main findings. For the uh, um, second perspective interaction, users preferred switching the content at a very flat angle of 12.5 degrees. So you have seen in the video we had different configurations of the angle between the main screen and the secondary screen. Um, in, in general, users also commented on uh, um, um, the watch-through prototype, and in generally, watch-through worked really, really well for them except, of course, under very strong illumination settings, for example, um, when the users uh, went uh, uh, outdoor. There was another problem that was uh, reported by a few users, that the main screen was sometimes distracting when looking at the watch-through watch screen, as the content was just mirrored. But I will talk about this in a few seconds. Besides that encouraging feedback, um, we also, uh, um, this, this uh, first prototype still has a uh, um, few limitations which we uh, addressed in the paper. First, for the third interaction techniques, we need, uh, we need uh, uh, six degrees of, of, of tracking. Of course, you know, you don't want to use an external tracking system. Therefore, we hope that technologies such as uh, Google's Project Tango will make its way from tablets also to smartphones to smart watches. Similarly, we need to track the user's uh, uh, perspective to do the dynamic field of view calculations. And here we hope that technologies that are currently built in, for example, the Amazon Fire Phone, will also find the way into today's and current uh, smart watches. Of course, you have seen we had a static version of that secondary display. And of course, you know, we already built like a clever or like a simple folding mechanism that you can fold in and out the secondary screen when needed. Um, let me quickly um, sum this up. Um, the, last content, uh, the last thing that was also mentioned by the users, um, currently we show dual content with just one display. And of course, in the future, it would be nice if the secondary display would be driven by another display and not by the main screen content. Okay, um, let me quickly sum up. Watch through is a novel interaction technique. 
for wrist-worn displays and allows to extend the visualization into 3D space above the smartwatch. And we see a lot of potential for watch-through in, in future work. And with that, I'm already at the end of this short presentation. If you would like to see a demo, please uh, approach me throughout the uh, conference. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you, guys. Uh, hi, Johannes. Uh, Diego Martinez from Sussex here. Uh, super cute. Super cute project. Uh, I was wondering, do you have any issues when you're using the peek through uh, thing? Like your reflection is going to be pretty much like three centimeters away from the display. You're using a flat reflector, right? Yeah, that is, that is, that is correct. Um, uh, surprisingly, um, this was noticed just by a few users. Huh. And surprisingly, most of the users really, when they switched the screen, they also somehow switched the focus. And um, even so, we saw the reflection. It was not distracting uh, the users because... So, so my, my question is more like, if I'm peeking through that light that I have over there, I need to focus there to see that, while I need to focus here to see the, the augmentation. And ah, okay. that's, that's going to cause quite a lot of fatigue. So I was wondering, maybe if you just use like a, say, some kind of a lens to move the virtual image farther apart, uh, that would probably help a lot. Do you? Did you? I think this is a good comment, and it's, um, of course, a problem of uh, most of augmented reality uh, uh, applications is uh, 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 focus switching the problem. Field, yeah. And I think it would be a good and interesting paper to, to find out what distance um, uh, would be the optimal, optimal uh, you know, focus plane to avoid you know, switching, switching costs. But I think that's, that's, a, that's a good point. Thank you very much.